Good morning, everyone. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen, Kalaumari. You can go ahead. Okay, great. I, I'm going to talk about my project that is entitled Classification of Triple Negative Breast Cancer Cell Lines by Gene Expression Analysis of Transmembrane Proteins Using Machine Learning Algorithms. My name is Kalaumari Mayoral Peña. Just to talk a little about myself, I'm from Querétaro, City in Mexico, and I'm a PhD student from the program of biotechnology at Tecnológico de Monterrey. And actually my PhD is about the development of devices for the diagnosis of triple negative breast cancer. So I have interest in finding new biomarkers that could improve the analysis and the diagnosis of this, this type of disease. Just in order to have some context about the triple negative breast cancer, it represents from 10 to 20 percent of breast cancer. However, it is uh, highly heterogeneous, so it's difficult to diagnose. There are several subtypes, and also, uh, well, the main characteristic of this type of disease is that these breast cancer, they, they have negative response to estrogen receptors, progesterone receptors, and also epidermal growth factor receptor. As a result, the, the hormonal and the immune therapies are not very effective and also com is commonly an, an, an aggressive type of disease. So the treatment is difficult and early diagnosis is important in order to have a positive outcome when you are diagnosed with this disease. So, and in order to, to find new biomarkers, well, the type of biomarkers I'm interested on are the membrane biomarkers because, well, they can be used for, for prognostics, to know the prognosis and also to monitor the development of, of different type of cancer. They also are critical in, in they play an important role in, in cellular structure and function and also in the proliferation of cancer cells. And, and also they, they are important as, as a drug target in the pharmaceutical perspective. So for this reason, I decided to generate a question and it says, it is possible to classify breast cancer cells by gene expression analysis of transmembrane proteins using machine learning. And well, the hypothesis is that these breast cancer uh, cell lines can be classified in the molecular sub subtypes using the expression of these transmembrane proteins and also implementing the machine learning algorithms. And the methodology consists in when, when in an approach. The first approach is uh, it involves the selection of transmembrane proteins from the annotation of the genes that are present in a data set. Then uh, performing some machine learning analysis using these genes that are selected and then validating these all these genes with, with another data set in order to see if the machine learning and the genes are performing in a proper manner. And for the second approach, in, that, in this approach, the idea is to select genes that are useful for the classification of, of breast cancer, but that are not necessarily uh, transmembrane genes, and then perform the the same type of machine learning analysis and validation in order to get at the end a list of transmembrane genes that are common with both approaches and which could be analyzed as, as candidates uh, for, for diagnosis. And the, the two data sets that I, that I used in this project, and the first one is is based in the article of modeling precision uh, treatment of breast cancer. And the second one is, is a recent uh, data set that was used for the external validation and it was 
uh, it was from the, a professor from Harvard Medical School. Here are the, the accession numbers. And for the preparation, the, the first step was to homogenize the information present in the data sets. Uh, I employed a quantum normalization with a threshold of five, then the annotation and the selection and the analysis and everything was performed in the Tower Bioinformatics Research Center, the algorithms and all the analysis. And for the first approach, uh, 160 genes were annotated as transmembrane and they were, they were selected and a principal components analysis was performed. And as you can see, there are some of the groups are easy to identify according to this analysis. And well, it's important to mention that the luminal BC and basal BC, they are normal breast cancer. They are not triple negative breast cancer. And the other ones are negative, triple negative breast cancer and, and non-malignant. Then uh, considering that 160 uh, genes is, is a large number, I decided to reduce the number of of genes. And for this, I perform a random forest algorithm and I use the 10% of the, of the data set to test the algorithm with an accuracy of 83.3%. And here is the, the criteria uh, and mean decrease accuracy bigger or lower than two and lower than minus two. And actually I got uh, 40 transmembrane genes according to this feature selection. And as you can see, the groups are, are pretty well separated. So this analysis suggests that uh, the posterior analysis could provide interesting results. So I decided to work with the supervised machine learning analysis using the mention for the genes. And actually uh, the performance with the first data set wasn't as, as good as expected. However, well, the number of, of samples was reduced, so it causes some difficulties with the algorithm. But during the validation using the, the second data set uh, with a larger number of, of samples to test, well, the, the accuracy was, was improved and actually as you can see, it's around 90 percent. So I think that these uh, these genes with the machine learning algorithm perform well. And then I work in the second approach, and in the second approach, I consider uh, 40, 14,000 genes uh, from the first data set, and and I also perform the feature selection using random forest. And in that case, I used an accuracy larger than 1.2 or smaller than minus 1.2 because yeah, the, the number uh, were lower in comparison to the, to the other feature selection. And I, as a result, I got 133 genes. And as you can see with the principal component analysis, the groups are pretty well separated. Just the, the ones of, that are breast cancer, ba basal breast cancer and luminal breast cancer are difficult to separate from the, from the basal and luminal. But in, in general, they look good. So I, I performed the supervised machine learning analysis using the mentioned genes. And the, with the first data set, the, the accuracy was was more was better in that in the in the previous approach, but not as good as as I as I expected. But during the uh, the external validation with the second data set, the the accuracy was was good was over ninety percent. So the all all this machine learning with the genes worked pretty well. And then after all these analysis, I decided to check from the, the first approach using these 40 genes from transmembrane proteins and, and then try to find which genes are 
shared by the two approaches. And according to, to this, there were two transmembrane genes that are shared by two approaches. So I go these two candidates that, that could be useful for, for future analysis. So as conclusions, uh, well, the machine learning algorithms that were used uh, were good for the classification of breast cancer cell lines using the gene expression analysis in both of the approaches. And actually the support vector machine algorithm provided better results in, comparison to, in comparison to the random forest. Also the machine learning algorithms uh, were validated with, with an external data set, and, but more, more external validation with other data set is, is recommended in order to, to know if the, if the results are consistent. And also the, the genes, uh, well, I obtained two genes that could be interesting for, for their analysis in, in the diagnostic area. And also, well, it's important to mention that the, well, it, it, the, the analysis involved only the gene expression. So other aspects of cancer are not considered. Also the accuracy of the machine learning algorithm can be improved by modifying the selection procedure and modifying the, the cutoff value during the feature selection. And also the transmembrane proteins need to be conf confirmed. The expression doesn't mean that the, the protein is present in the cell. So this confirmation is necessary. And well, I was expecting having more than than two genes, but unfortunately, just two, two genes are shared with both approaches. And that's all. Thank you for, for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Kalamari, for this excellent presentation. Um, does anyone have any question for Kalamari on this project? You can ask us in the chat box, or you can ask him I actually directly. Have a I actually have a question. Uh, Kalamari, could you expand a little bit more on uh, why you were interested in this project and what was your previous experience with bioinformatics and what have you learned through this experience? Well, actually, uh, well, the, I, I, I had important limitations uh, with respect to the lab work. So I was trying to find other ways to complement my, my research that doesn't involve uh, the use of laboratory facilities. And also, well, uh, bioinformatics, I think is a very important tool that could help in, in improving the research without requiring uh, a, a large amount of, of ex expenditures with respect of reagents and materials. So I, I had this interest of implementing bioinformatic approaches in order to, to make our, our research more efficient, considering the limitations of resources and facilities. And uh, for this reason, I, I was interested in joining the this research internship. And actually I learned a lot about the use of, of these tools and, and the I think that the data science perspective is, is very useful because usually the courses about bioinformatics they just uh, they just tell you how to use some of the databases but you don't see all of that in, in a in a data science perspective. So I think that this, this perspective is very useful and I I got very interesting results that I I expect to continue working on. Uh, here Thank I have... you. Uh, one second before we get to those questions. My other question is: so, what what are you planning to do with this project after you're done with this program? Well, uh, I would like to to continue with this project in order to generate some uh, a paper. So I was thinking that maybe it would be a good idea to continue working in the internship or to 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 yeah to to enter to the internship again in order to continue with some parts of the project in order to 
to generate uh, a publication. Okay, thank you, Kalamari. Here I have a question from Daido. He's asking, have you?